Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. I'm going to be playing a little catch up, but we've got some great updates for you this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Megan Longoria's got a blog post where she's looking at keyboard accessibility for visuals inside a Power BI desktop. This is something that came with the March 2019 Power BI desktop release, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But this just calls out the new accessibility functionality that shipped with the latest version of Power BI Desktop. I know this is something that Megan's extremely passionate about, and she does a great job of covering what came with this release. So if you're interested in accessibility items, specifically using keyboards with Power BI Desktop, be sure to check out the blog post down in the description below. Ruth Pozuelo over at the Kerbal YouTube channel has got a video talking about how to get free support inside of Power BI. I, I love this video just because it calls to my heart. I was in support for 10 years. I love helping customers. And this is just something that I struggle with every day in terms of helping people and answering questions. And she does a great job of outlining items that you can go to get free help for Power BI. She references a blog post that Greg Deckler did and it also inspired me. I'm gonna have a video out this week with my take on how to get help with Power BI. So if you want some great resources about how to get help with Power BI, be sure to check out this video. It'll really help in terms of fine tuning what you're asking, how you're looking for help, and how to actually get the answer that you need. The Power BI team's got a blog post talking about how to create a multivariate visual inside of Power BI. When I first saw the subject line, I'm like, what the heck is that? But reading the blog post, they basically call out that we're talking about small multiples here. Now, calm down. Small multiples are not available natively inside of Power BI. You'd have to go look at custom visuals to go and do this. But what this blog post walks through is how you could accomplish this using bookmarks and selections inside of Power BI. I know, I know, I'm already hearing you. I've seen some Twitter posts on this already saying like, look, you know, can we just get small multiples inside of Power BI? If that is something you are really passionate about, I've got a link down in the description below to an idea item you can go vote up if that is something you desire. But this is a great creative way to actually accomplish this inside of Power BI, especially if you can't use custom visuals or you're not wanting to use custom visuals inside of Power BI itself. Check out the blog post down below. It goes through all the steps on how to do this and hopefully it helps you. An update came out on the new workspace experience, things that are coming, GA, oh my gosh, lots of stuff. It is coming soon. So the blog post mentions that the timeline is April for GA. My guess is this is gonna be at the end of April, but there are so many things surrounding GA that you really need to be aware of. So when GA comes, one thing to note is that the default is gonna switch for creating new workspaces. So the new workspace experience will be the default. The old workspace experience will now be an alternative if you want once GA happens. Wukash also points out that the usage metrics capabilities for new workspaces is coming. It's already in the deployment pipeline, so you should see it very soon. And he also walks through other items that are coming at GA and also things that are coming after GA. This is a big blog post. There's a lot of stuff to go through. I highly recommend you go through it, especially if you're admins of your tenant or you own workspaces, if you're an admin of a workspace definitely look through this blog post to understand what's coming, when it is, and how it's going to affect you. Links, as always, down in the description below, along with every link in this roundup and some bonus items, so go check it out. We got a summary blog post on the Power BI service and mobile app and gateway as well for February 2019. This is just covering all the great things that came out in February. There was a lot of stuff that actually came out. I'm always surprised every time I look at this, I'm like, ah, it was kind of a quiet month last month. Whoop, nope, no, it wasn't. <laughs> There's always a lot of stuff coming out. This covers things such as, you know, the premium capacity metrics app, updates that happen to that, updates that happen for bulk items with inside of the admin portal, the data lineage items inside of data flows, on-demand email subscriptions, updates to the mobile app, so many things in this blog post. So check it out go through the blog post and see everything that you might have missed in the month of February. The March 2019 release of Power BI Desktop is now available. I highly recommend you update to the latest version. Also, if you're not installing Power BI Desktop from the Microsoft Store, I definitely recommend you do that because it'll automatically keep Power BI Desktop up to date. 
As with every month, this month of Power BI Desktop definitely has some awesome things inside of it. One thing I'm really excited about, and I'm excited also to see where they take this feature, is the ability to use static URLs on buttons, bookmarks, and shapes. So that means we have actions for these items where I can actually put in a URL, and now I can hit the button and it can take me anywhere. Right now, it is only static, but like I said, I'm excited to see where they take this feature. Hopefully, it improves to be able to use dynamic as well. Time will tell. There were also some other awesome items, so the ability to have single select slicers, so we got like radio dials instead of the checkboxes, heat maps on Bing maps, so it really looks a lot cooler. There were some filter pane improvements, page alignment options that were updated, continued accessibility work, one of which I highlighted earlier. The new modeling view is now generally available, so that is the only option available now when you go to the modeling on after your report and your data. Now you just have one modeling view that's available for you. There were some new DAX functions and also some improvements from a connector standpoint. One of them that came out was an update to the PDF connector where it can support tables on multiple pages now, so that's awesome. There were more items in this blog post as well, so definitely check out this blog post. Links down in the description below. Be sure to check it all out and make sure you update to the latest version of Power BI Desktop. All right, what was your favorite item in this week's roundup? Maybe it was something I called out. Maybe it was something I didn't. For me, I've got to go with the update for the new workspace experience. I'm really excited for this to be the only workspace experience and also to see what things can happen inside of the service once that's there. But I want to throw it back to you. What was your favorite item? Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video. It's funny. Camera's trying to focus on the stormtrooper face.